Well, hello again, all my fellow enthusiasts of the Pajero Mini. My name's Brett, and today we're going to go over your front anti-sway bar, some maintenance items with that, what to look for, uh, what parts you might be able to replace the original equipment parts with, as well as the tools needed to perform the job. So let's head underneath the vehicle and take a look. Welcome to the underside of a 1995 H56A. This is a Pajero Mini Turbo. It's four-wheel drive chassis. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the underside of a vehicle, welcome and congratulations for taking the first step into uh, maintaining your own vehicle. Now, if you're familiar with this, you may already know what I'm about to tell you. Fast forward a bit. So this is your anti-sway or anti-roll bar, as it's known. It helps prevent the vehicle, which tends to be a bit top-heavy, especially one like this that's lifted from swaying too much or, you know, literally <laughs> rolling over when you make sharp maneuvers. Now, the anti-sway bar is connected via a cross member fastened in place by these bushings and straps and connected to your lower control arms on either side by what's called sway bar end links. Now, the two maintenance items on the sway bar are this, the bushing that holds the bar in place on the cross member, as well as the two sway bar end links. Now, I'm gonna move you a little bit closer so you can see this. This is not gonna be very hard to tell what's wrong here because mine is, is really bad, but over time, these bushings tend to shrink and you will end up with something maybe not as severe as this but they can rock side to side which then produces a lot of strain on your sway bar end links and you end up with torn boots all of your grease ends up coming out of there and the ball and socket joint there will just rust up on you and the, the parts are no longer performing their intended purpose so these are the maintenance items we're going to take care of today. The first thing you're going to want to do is determine the outer diameter of your sway bar. So if you have a caliper, that would be extremely handy. I set this on millimeters. We're reading 22.15. That's going to be a 22 millimeter sway bar. It's just a little bit of extra coating there or paint that that picked up on. So. We know that when we order bushings, we're going to need some 22 millimeter inner diameter bushings. I've already got a measure here on my bolt pattern. So on the sway bar end links here, we're also going to take a measurement roughly center to center to see if we can identify some aftermarket parts or parts for a different make and model vehicle that might fit and be more readily available in the United States. So just kind of eyeballing it here, we're looking at about Eh, 2.4, almost two and a half inches. Onto our parts table here, you're looking at a set of Prothane polyurethane sway bar bushings. This is a 22 millimeter universal kit. They come with new straps, nice elongated mounting holes so they fit in many applications. These are easy to source. They're not very expensive. I think I paid $22 shipped for them. This is a polyurethane bushing. They are much firmer than the OE rubber ones are, so they don't have as much give, which gives you a longer effective service life in many cases and a lot tighter feel to the sway bar overall. Now, that comes with its own Prothane Super Grease to help eliminate any squeaking you might encounter. So that would be part number 19-1121. Those are the Prothane 22 millimeter sway bar bushings. The second thing you're going to need or want is a Hot Wheels Mitsubishi Pajero Evolution. No, I'm just kidding. You know how it is when you're a car person. All of your friends and family think it's funny to keep buying you Hot Wheels of vehicles that you own. That's cool. Another one to hang on the wall, I guess. The second part here, the application on these was a 2002 Toyota Corolla. That's the USDM car. Now, earlier we measured the sway bar end links that are on the vehicle, the original equipment ones, and we came up with, we had it set on inches, and we had 2.41 inches, I believe. Could be a little 
off there. So we're gonna spread out our caliper and take a look here. If we take a center to center measurement on either one of these, on the back or even on the studs, they are pretty much an exact fit. Now I prefer this type because they're greasable, but not just that. The angle that the Zerk fittings goes in to the ball and socket joint here at means that it's not going to be an issue for you know things possibly knocking the grease fittings off when they're drilled and tapped into the the back of the housing here. I really like this design. This is a Moog suspension part, M-O-O-G. The part number on these is K90124, okay? Now, there are many applications that probably measure up to, you know, just under two and a half inches. So you can do your own research if you'd like, or you can watch how these are installed. And if you like the, you know, fit and finish of them, this might be something you're interested in as well. As far as tools are concerned, you don't have to get crazy and buy everything under the sun, but Harbor Freight actually sells a really interesting tool set. It's a go-through socket set here. It says 21 piece. When you install one of the sockets into the ratchet, you can still stick your Allen key through it, which is what you're gonna need in order to help remove the sway bar end links. Now, quite often they require the use of a reciprocating saw or a cutoff wheel on a grinder, and we'll see if we get to that point, but we're gonna try it with basic hand tools first. Probably gonna be either a four and a half or a five millimeter Allen key for the center of the stud to remove. Uh, you're gonna want your 3 8 ratchet, maybe a short extension, and a 12 millimeter socket on there. And as you saw earlier, the digital caliper comes in handy for identifying the size of, of parts you wanna match up or cross-reference. We're gonna try this 17 millimeter pass-through socket on the ratchet. And let's try a like I said, I don't know, maybe a five millimeter Allen key for the center here. And uh, yeah, okay, so that fits. So we'll get our ratchet in place. You're gonna put your five millimeter Allen through there. And now try as you may, this is an uphill battle, but you will prevail most of the time. Okay, so that came loose relatively easy ah uh, you may or may not be that lucky but you just saw it happen live i <laughs> i did not touch that beforehand now now go ahead and remove that one carefully the bar is probably going to swing down like this one did and that's fine that just shows you how worn out those original rubber bushings are that the entire sway bar is simply free to swing like this Next step is to remove the four 12 millimeter bolts to here and two on that side that are holding the straps around the bushings. Now that we have our sway bar out and on the table, we'll go ahead and just remove the straps and then remove the original equipment rubber bushings. As you can see here, you're going to most likely end up with some age-related ozone cracking going on in the rubber there. Perfectly normal. This would be a good time to grab a hold of some of your favorite cleaner. Go ahead and give it a spritz and wipe it down with a rag. Once you've finished destroying the last of your good bath towels, be sure to hide them on trash day at the bottom of the can so that your partner doesn't kick you out for doing that. No, I'm just kidding. I hope. Now is the point where we're ready to install our sway bar bushing. So we're going to go ahead and remove the straps from them. We have our Prothane Super Grease handy. You're going to locate the slit on the side of the bushing where they open up. See that? Okay, you're going to just uh, go ahead and apply some amount of grease to the inside there. Be sure you have something to wipe down your finger with, but don't be shy. So inside there... I'll show you on the one I didn't do yet. I don't know if you can see this or not, but inside there, there are grooves which will hold the grease in place, if you can see that on camera, for a longer duration. Once you slide your bar back under the car, it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and throw a little dab of grease on the inside of the bracket as well. 
You may want a helper for this part. It, it could be difficult for some people. I think I'll be able to manage. We'll find that out in just a moment. You're gonna then hold your bar up to where it belongs. Locate your bottom bolt on one side or the other. Start it by hand so it'll help you out holding it in place. Start the other bottom bolt by hand. Before I tighten these universal mounting brackets down, we're gonna install the sway bar end links so we make sure we have a correct fit first. Then we'll slide this wherever it needs to be, up or down, and fasten it on to the cross member. I didn't get to show you earlier in the tool section, but sometimes end links do not come with holes in the end of the studs for an Allen wrench. And in this case, instead, at the base of the stud, there's uh, squared off sides for an open wrench. So it looks like we're gonna use about an 18 on there and that's gonna do it. Here's just a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the original equipment end link versus the new end link that we're gonna be installing. So the overall diameter of the housing is notably larger on the new Moog part and I like how the dust boot or the, the grease boot is tucked in on this. Nothing protruding to uh, get snagged anywhere as well as being greasable having you know dual zerk fittings where the original one was a sealed unit and once the grease leaks out that's the end of it. At least with the new one, you can go ahead and service this when you're doing an oil change. I'll just start the nuts on the end by hand. This particular end link has a 15 millimeter nut on the end, and then that was an 18 millimeter wrench that we determined we we're going to use for the inside there, the bottom of the stud. Then you just want to pop on over to the other side and go ahead and finish installing that link on the other side as well. Make sure that the dip in the sway bar is relatively centered underneath the drive shaft so that there's plenty of clearance there. Make sure that the joints look relatively the same angle on either end. And the bushing bracket is already located exactly where it needs to be. Maybe push up on it just a hair if you can. And go ahead and fasten down your four 12 millimeter bolts. Then you can give it the old, that ain't going nowhere. Last but not least, grab your grease gun and go ahead and give each one a shot of grease. Won't need much because they're probably already full from the factory. Just one pump and each will suffice. Oh man, it's getting hot in here. Friends, thank you again for joining me. I'm going to go cool off. Appreciate you hanging out with me today for another installment of how to maintain or work on your Pajero Mini. Uh, hopefully you learned something in this video, and if you liked it, you know what to do. Have a good one. Until next time.